gonna put the presenter mode up anyway. Oh, and this isn't the beginning. See, then if I kept it on earlier, I'd have been ready. Um, so good evening, everyone, and thank you, Danica, very much for that warm welcome. Um, like she said, uh, I'm Antonia Robinson. I use she, her, hers pronouns, and I am the third and fourth year student success advocate at the University of South Florida St. Petersburg campus. Um, now, advocates are professional staff who help students with any academic concerns such as time management, study strategies, or even um, just knowing what are the right resources to go to on campus. We also help hold students accountable for any goals they set for themselves. I also like to jokingly say to students, we are not an academic advisor and we are not a therapist. We are somewhere in between. So that's just a little bit about me and my role, but I want to see who's in this workshop. So if you could, in the chat, please write your name, major, and one concern you have about transferring. And if you're a professional staff, um, still please write your name and then just what is something you think might be a concern for students as they transfer. Um, and as those responses come in, Danica, can you be my chat monitor, please? Of course, of course. Because I just realized I don't have my phone set up to actually look at the chat. But yes, once again, your name, your major, and one concern you might have about transferring. And I hear some typing happening. OK, so the first um, comment that we have is meeting other students may be a, a um, hard thing to adjust to. The next one is. Changing to. Interpreting. So right now having no concerns. Of, oh, got you. Sorry, Hannah. She's changing her major to interpreting, but right now she has no concerns about transferring. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. And I feel like one more just came in. I can't yes, wait. there's a concern about fitting into new student life and getting adjusted to a new campus. Okay. Those are some good concerns to have, and those are valid concerns. Um, hopefully, over the course of our presentation, we'll address some of those. Um, the next concern, sorry. No, go ahead. Okay, the next concern is networking. Um, another one is adapting to a new college. Um, just the shock of the differences between community college and the university. And then we have one more comment coming up. Yay, I can feel the pressure mounting as this comment comes in. It's going to be a good comment. I feel it, whatever it is. It's going to be a great comment. <laughs> this is also like when you're texting someone on the iPhone and you see the bubbles and you're like, What's happening? Like, what are they saying? The next one is helping to assist students make a smooth transition into the big city and university life. Um, and then the last comment is concerned about how many classes and campus activities that will be open or come back due to COVID. OK, awesome. So those are all, once again, really valid concerns to have. And guess what? You have someone who knows about those concerns. So because I'm the third and fourth year student success advocate, um, and USF St. Petersburg campus has such a large transfer population. The majority of the students I work with have attended a different institution beforehand. So this has helped provide me some understanding of what transfer students face. And it's only fitting and proper that this evening we talk about an important topic that pertains to each of you as well as the concerns you express. And that topic is transfer shock. So we'll get into this a little bit more. So in this presentation, we're going to cover several things like Danica mentioned, such as what is transfer shock? What are some tips to beat it? As well as overall tips for academic success that you should be implementing right now as a student at SPC. So first, let's define a few things. Any student at a college who or university who completes classes at another institution after leaving high school is considered a transfer student. So for instance, you all are currently enrolled at SPC, and then when you graduate from here and you transfer to USF, St. Petersburg campus, um, you will be considered a transfer student. And something that a lot of students don't recognize is like once you're a transfer student, you're always a transfer student. It's not a bad thing. It's a great thing because you have transferred someone from somewhere and so you're transferring to a new location. Um, 
Now, students who transfer to a new institution often think they know all about college. And in some ways, this is true because you've college before. However, and I like to put some facts in here, more than 60% of transfer students at institutions across the nation often cite feeling confused, overwhelmed, and concerned about not succeeding academically. So if you feel that way after you transfer, just know that you are not alone. Um, if you're starting to feel or starting to get low grades, that could be a result of transfer shock. So transfer shock is a term used to describe the different grades that some students experience the first or even second semester after transferring as they um, adjust to a new surrounding. So take, for example, a student who graduated from SPC and they made like a 3.5 GPA. They were on the dean's list or president's list. But after their first semester at USF, they are on the academic probation list um, because they only earned a 1.5. Now, obviously, that is definitely not something that a student wants or even expects in their mind because you know how to college. You've college before you're successful. Um, so right now, all of you are experienced college students. But once you transfer, you'll essentially become a, you'll essentially become a beginner again, um, the same way as like a freshman student is a beginner when they enter into a new institution. A transfer student is going through that beginner stage. So I love this quote from poet, activist, and educator Nikki Giovanni. It just says, a lot of people resist transition and therefore never allow themselves to enjoy who they are. Embrace the change, no matter what it is. Once you do, you can learn about the new world you're in and take advantage of it. So how does this relate to you, you're probably wondering. College in itself can be difficult to navigate because it's a transition. Um, so there is a theory that describes transition as any event or non-event that results in change, relationships, routines, assumptions, and roles. And all of us have experienced a transition in some point in our life. Uh, does anyone have any idea of what a transition might be? Go ahead and write that in the chat. And I'll give that a few seconds, you know, for you all to write your examples of what is a transition. And there are no wrong answers here. And Danica, once again, I'm going to have you as our, our chat monitor. Of course, of course. OK, so the ones that we have so far are moving. Um, the transition from high school to college was a big transition. <clears throat> Graduating or changing majors, moving from one experience to another, going from online to back on campus. Absolutely. All of those are examples of transition. I mean, it can be something as simple as breaking up in a relationship. That's a transition. Um, so experiencing transfer shock does not mean you suck at transitioning and are unable to succeed uh, at a college. It does mean, however, that you may need to adjust your academic habits and seek out resources you might not have used before. Maybe you never needed tutoring. Maybe you didn't go to your professor office hours at SPC. That might not be the case at USF. Um, so don't underestimate the transi transition and potential transfer shock. And the best way to do that is to be prepared. Um, if I can quote the Lion King, be prepared like Scar. So how do you beat transfer shock? I'm sure you're all like, what can I do to beat this? It's very simple. Um, I will highlight some ways you can beat it. And once again, keep in mind that it's normal to have transfer shock. It's a normal part of your transfer experience. If your grades dip temporarily, you can definitely rebound if you follow these five simple steps, which I will cover more in depth over the next few minutes. So the first one is recognize differences. 40% of the transfer students I've worked with have expressed concerns about not realizing there are differences between the platforms and systems used at USF St. Petersburg campus versus SPC. For example, Canvas is where some classes are uploaded and archive them is how you book appointments with advisors. And I get it, all of these systems and more can totally be confusing to understand and navigate. But going to your transfer experience, being aware that while systems may look different, they can still serve the same function. So maybe you have a different degree audit system at SBC, but more than likely you can still find similar aspects in our degree audit system, which is called degree works. It kind of just names itself. And then knowing there are differences can also help you reach out to someone for help. So if you don't understand it, please ask for help. Like it is once again, really hard to understand these systems at first, 
But if you ask someone, whether it's your advisor, a classmate, or just anyone to help you understand it, they will. Um, another concern for students is policies and procedures. So USF only allows students two withdrawals after 60 credits. And then at SPC, from what I understand, it's unlimited. You can withdraw however many times you want. Another difference is the grading system. So USF has a plus or minus grading system. Now this can be beneficial in some cases because an A minus is much higher than a B, but it also can be hurtful because a C minus will negatively impact your GPA. Also, grade forgiveness is not unlimited and un automatic at USF. You only get three classes you can apply for grade forgiveness and you have to complete a form to do so. Um, and that's not to say like all the policies and procedures at SPC and USF are different. There are some overlap, but you want to make sure you recognize that there will be some differences as well. And again, if you don't understand the policies and procedures, you're not sure about them, make sure you're asking for help. Uh, one of the big things I stress to students is making sure you're reading the course catalog and you're looking at all of the different policies and procedures. Maybe you're not going to read it in depth like I do because that's what my job is, but you want to make sure you're looking at it and familiarizing yourself with the policies and procedures. Um, lastly, rigor is a big difference. Now, course rigor simply defined is the academic or intellectual challenge of a class. The more difficult a class is, the more rigorous it is. And then rigor in some ways is more than just how difficult a class is um, and even more than how hard a student has to work to earn a good grade. Think about it like this. A rigorous class prepares students by teaching them and having them exercise skills useful in school, the professional world and life in general. So essentially you need to expect your classes to be harder when you transfer. Um, now, also, that there is something to say about the fact that when you're transferring into an institution and you have an AA degree, you're going to go into upper division classes. So the students who started at that institution as freshmen and are now juniors and seniors are also going to notice that the class is a little bit more rigorous um, just because that's the nature of it. When you're starting to take 3000 level, 4000 level classes, it's not fixing to be an easy cakewalk. You know, you're not an underwater basket weaving one. You are an underwater basket weaving 10 and that is not going to be easy and that is not a real class. So just in case you were wondering. Um, so because the classes are going to be a little bit harder, um, you're going to need to take a more active role in your learning. Instructors, in fact, expect students to think analytically, be ready to participate and learn more independently. Um, you may need to incorporate new reading and study strategies to effectively process information. And so recognizing the differences is so important for being transfer shot. These are not the only differences, but these are just the main ones I want to highlight for now. Um, but there are more ways that you could beat transfer shock and I'll share them now. So before transferring to USF St. Petersburg campus, because that's what I'm going to highlight, um, you will have to attend orientation. It's not optional. It is mandatory. Now keep in mind, this is an orientation specifically for a transfer student. And I understand like some transfer students feel they don't need to pay attention to orientation since they have already attended college. I mean, you had to attend orientation for SPC. So you're probably just like, what do I need to learn? What's going to be different? A lot. A lot is going to be different. Um, and that's just like as what I mentioned earlier. There are many differences. So do more than just attend orientation. Make sure you're actively engaging. Now, how can you actively engage? I'm so glad you asked. First, ask yourself, what do I want to get out of orientation? You need to set a goal. Is it knowing all the resources, connecting with other transfer students, or gaining some insight that will help you college better? Um, having that goal will help when taking notes. And why do you want to take notes? Because there is going to be some information thrown at you during orientation. There's going to be too much information in some cases. You are not going to remember all of it. Um, and you will get like materials provided like handouts and so forth, but you still want to make sure you're taking notes so that you can know what I need to look at later. What do I need to refer back to based on what was shared? Because um, it's real easy to hear everything they're saying in orientation and say, oh, yeah, this sounds great. This is, am this is amazing. This is something I want to use. And then forget about it. We are in the middle of the semester. Week seven of the semester is not the same as when you took orientation. And it's hard to remember what you don't remember. Um, also, come into orientation with some questions. 
It's a great opportunity to meet with a variety of experts and resources at one time. And don't be afraid to ask questions because you need to help your transfer experience. Uh, so ask all the questions you want. Uh, ask as many questions. If no one else is asking questions, go ahead and be that question asker. There are no wrong questions. Um, so don't just sit through your orientation. You want to make sure you're a part of it by actively engaging. Um, Antonio, we have, we have mm -hmm. a question. All right, I have an answer. The question is, will orientation be in person? Um, there is two options. There's like a virtual version, and then there also is an in-person version. Now, right now, because of the pandemic, all of the orientations are virtual. Um, but I do believe once we go back to fully in-person, there will still be a virtual orientation option. Come to the in-person one, it's great. I'm there. Any other questions? I was just gonna actually say that, like feel free to stop me at any point and ask questions because that's what you gotta do. All right, if not, I'm gonna move on to the next. All right, so now you have officially transferred to USF St. Petersburg campus. You wanna make sure you cultivate connections. Um, here's a little alliteration for you. So one of the first people to make connections with are your instructors or your professors, you know, faculty. There are a variety of different names you might hear. Um, they want you to be successful. So office hours are a great way to get a better understanding of course materials as well as making that connection with an instructor. And then one of the things I like to stress to students is you might need recommendation letters one day. How are you going to ask a professor, a faculty member, an instructor for a recommendation letter if they don't know you? And the only way they're going to know you is if they get a connection. Um, I always say professors primarily recommend people they know, so make sure they know you. Um, also, make an effort to meet new people and establish fr um, friendships with your classmates. One of the best ways to do that is to create a study group. One, study groups are a great way to connect by bonding over a common interest, succeeding in the class, and then two, study groups also help you learn the material better. Um, Something that's really cool about USF St. Petersburg campus is every new student, every new transfer student, and every new freshman student is assigned a peer coach. For transfer students, these peer coaches typically transferred a couple of semesters beforehand. So they've been in your shoes before. They know how to navigate the system. They understand policy. If they don't understand it, they know who to point you to. And also they're there to be that first friend, that mentor for you. So make that connection with them. They typically reach out within the first week of the semester and they just leave an open line of communication for their students. You can also make some connections by getting involved in a club or organization. We have a variety of great clubs, such as the Tabletop Gaming Society, which I'm actually the club advisor for, so shout out to the Card and Board Game Club. Um, and participating in club and activities will not only enhance your experience, but it will also enhance the relationships you have. Um, connections will help you get acclimated to your transition. And if you're not necessarily a person who wants to join a club or organization, you can go to activities and events as well. Um, they also help you feel connected to the institution itself. Um, so I can't say enough about taking advantage of going to activities and events or even clubs and organization on campus, as well as forming these key connections. Now, I would like to know, I didn't list several other key connections because we will talk about them on a later slide, but these are just a few to keep in mind to start things off. So next, I want to talk about managing your time. So maintaining balance in your schedule is so important, not only after you transfer, but even right now, um, because you only have 168 hours in a week. And 50% of the transfer students I work with say they feel like they don't have enough time to balance it all. They're overwhelmed. And um, typically it's because they don't recognize what areas they need to balance. Um, as a student, as a person, you have three components for your overall time. You've got work, which encompasses classes, studying, working a job, or even an internship. Play, which includes socializing hobbies, you know, talking on the phone or watching that Netflix marathon, as well as life, which is family obligations, sleeping, eating, running errands, and so forth. If you don't manage your time, it will manage you. Um, and often the way that manifests for students is in low grades. And that's when I have to outreach to be like, hey, what's going on? And then that's when I get, I'm overwhelmed because I have so much happening. So it's important to look at how much time are you devoting to each of these areas. Um, do a time audit. 
Um, make sure you don't take on too much by balancing it all. And so there are some ways you can help with your time, like manage your time, such as creating a schedule, making to-do lists, and just prioritizing tasks. Um, but that's not the only ways you can do that. So I want to hear from y'all again. What are some ways you feel like you either A, manage your time now or some ways you've seen from other people that they manage their time? Go ahead and write that in the chat. And my wonderful chat monitor, Danica, will read them. Oh, planner. Yes. Oh, sorry, Danica, you're supposed to be reading them. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you for that. <clears throat> Uh, planning out time to do things, using calendars and note sections and phones, agendas, making to-do lists or smart goals for the week, using planner and Google Calendar. And then we have a few more that are coming through. Oh, yes, I see the bubbles. Thank you to a schedule. And last but definitely not least, um, writing tasks on a whiteboard on her wall. So those are all like, amazing ways to manage your time if you aren't doing something now go ahead and pick something from this list and do it to help manage your time because once again uh, you want to find out what works best for you with time management and then stick to it it's not like you have to do all of these things at one time it might really just be finding that one thing and utilizing it for me i like to uh utilize my calendar but i also make to-do lists and whatever i put on the to-do list i put on my calendar with a specific time so Figure out what works for you and stick to it. All right, so hopefully when you transition to the University of South Florida St. Petersburg campus, it will be smooth. But what if your experience uh, is not that smooth? What if you feel like, or what if you notice a dip in your grades despite, despite following the other four steps I mentioned? Number one, do not call me saying, Antonio, you told me if I did all these things, it's gonna be perfect. No, it is not gonna be perfect. I'm saying, don't panic. Remind yourself that it's normal once again because it's transfer shock and your situation can change in even mid semester. Once you recognize that and don't panic, then go ahead and utilize the appropriate resources to help support you along the way. Um, if you don't know what resource you need, start with your PATH counselors. They know all the resources at USF. Um, they can definitely help you there. And of course, you can always talk to me, your student success advocate, because more than likely, I will probably be your student success advocate. Um, now, each of these offices that I'm listing on this slide serve a specific purpose, but at the end of the day, they're all dedicated to helping you be as successful as possible. Now, some of the offices may reach out to you, like your PATH counselor is going to talk to you. Um, advocacy, I will reach out to you. SOS, which is Student Outreach and Support, might reach out to you. But then there are others where you have to take a little bit more initiative. You got to go to the Career Center if you want to talk about your career. Um, if you need the library, you got to go talk to the library. Uh, or even if you're wanting to go to the Wellness Center uh, to use like their therapy services, you do have to set that up yourself. Um, College, once again, can be a challenge, but that doesn't mean you have to struggle alone. Um, in fact, you do not want to struggle alone. So take advantage of the resources available to help you. And once again, if you don't know where to go, ask someone. If you don't remember anything else, ask, because if you ask, that will help you when you're dealing with transfer shock. So those are just kind of like the main ways to beat transfer shock, like we've gone through five steps. So all of you are going to be successful when you transition to the University of South Florida St. Petersburg campus. But how are you right now as a student? So I want you to think about your current experience at SPC. Um, and this will kind of help you in answering these questions. Do not answer these questions in the chat. These are more so rhetorical questions for yourself. Um, so first question is just, do you create an action plan for the semester? So each semester you should anticipate what is your life going to look like with your classes? Am I going to have a hard course load or are my classes going to be easy? Um, and then also you want to think about your habits, your needs, your characteristics and so forth as a student. If you know you are not a morning person, then maybe you shouldn't set up time to study in the morning. Maybe you need to study a little bit later in the evening. Um, if you know you need to have that planner to study, then you want to make sure you're getting that planner. Um, so based on those characteristics, your habits, based on what you, um, your schedule is looking like, set goals so that when you lose motivation or if you lose motivation, you can refer back to them. Um, for a lot of students around about midpoint in the semester, that's when that no motivation starts to wane a little bit. So that's why you want to make sure you're creating an action plan. 
And then don't just create this action plan. Make sure you also stick to it because, you know, what's the point of having a plan if you're not going to follow it? And also know that you can adjust this plan. It doesn't have to be one set thing that you set for yourself. Like maybe you're like, oh, I'm not a morning person, but somehow miraculously you start to become a morning person. Then you can adjust to start studying in the morning. Next question. Do you preview material before attending class? So previewing your text and other study materials before a class to helps you develop like a big picture of what you'll be covering. A lot of times most students think, oh, I should just show up in class, sit down. The professor is going to, you know, explain everything to me and it's going to be great. And you can do that. But if you really want to be successful, you want to make sure you're taking a look at it before. Like, don't just attend class without a clue of what's going on. And when I say preview, it doesn't mean you got to read the whole book. Um, it's more so skimming through the chapter, looking at least at the syllabus to see what you're talking about, checking out the assigned readings, glancing over even what the homework assignment might be. Um, now, once you've developed a big picture, it'll be much easier to remember and learn the details. So make sure you're previewing. Next. Do you review notes right after the lecture? Now, ideally, right after class, you want to go ahead and look at your notes. If you can't do it immediately after, look at it at some point during the day. And the reason why you want to do this is because you want to take some time to review, to review your class notes, to fill in any gaps and formulate questions. Because it's really easy to just like write your notes in class and then not look at them again until the day before the test and say, what was I talking about? What did this mean? I don't even understand what the professor was trying to explain here and I don't understand what to study now. Um, now, one thing about this review process, it transfers the information you learn during class from your short term to your long term memory. It also reinforces new concepts and it increases your confidence because you're like, hey, I kind of understand this. I know what's going on. I know what I'm learning. Next one, do you study two to four hours per one credit hour? Um, reinforce the material you've learned during class and make sure you thoroughly understand the subject matter being taught by actively studying. Um, so a lot of times students are confused when I say study. They're like, oh, well, you know, I only have projects in my class, so I don't, you know, read the book. Studying is not just reading the book. Studying is reviewing your notes. It's reading the material. It's writing papers. It's working on projects. It's whatever you are doing to interact with the material that you have learned. Studying is not going to class. You go to class for a certain number, certain number of hours. You study for a certain number of hours. Um, if I don't stress anything else, that is the second thing I want to stress. Um, now, with this age of like virtual classes, it is kind of easy to blur that line between studying slash being in class. But you really want to have a very specific time that's just studying that's completely different from when you're in class. Like they should not be at the same time. Um, and the reason for that is you should be spending more time outside of class preparing for it than you do in class. So that's why we have the you study two to four hours per one credit hour. So if you are taking like, you know, three credits, that's anywhere between six hours of study time. If it's fairly easy underwater basket weaving number one um, or 12 hours of study time. If it's underwater basket weaving 10 because you need a little bit more time to get all of the material in. Once again, underwater basket weaving does not exist. Everyone always asks me that. That is not a class at USF. It might be a class somewhere else. Um, so another one is, do you regularly attend office hours or tutoring? Um, once again, office hours let you talk to your professor outside of class and once again, build that connection. Um, and you can also talk beyond what you're learning and get additional support. And then tutoring provides additional help with homework or assignments. But here's the thing, you cannot wait until the day before the test to go to tutoring or to office hours. You actually want to make sure you're going to them on a regular. Because if you're waiting to the test, like what if that's too late? What if everyone else is in there? There's 500 people in office hours and you don't even have time to ask your question. But if you're going in there on a regular basis, you're building that connection with the professor one. Um, or if you're going to tutoring, you're building that connection with your tutor and you're also able to get that time that you need to ask the questions that you need to help you. So once again, these are not the only ways to be a successful student, but definitely thinking about them will push you in the right direction. Um, does anyone have anything that they do that helps them be a really successful student? Go ahead and write that in the chat and my lovely chat monitor Danica will also go over it.
see some thoughts coming in. Hopefully, maybe. It's like, once again, like when you're waiting for someone to text back to you on the iPhone. It's like, I know you're writing. I know the bubble went away. And one of the things I love to plug is once you transfer to USF St. Petersburg campus, you get a whole list of how you can be a successful student at least once a semester from your student success advocate. Um, and those are usually tips from students for students. Okay, Antonia, we have at least one comment coming in. Um, setting certain days for certain classwork helps me with time management and study time. Staying organized is another one. Yes, um, making sure you're setting those certain days for um, classwork is a beneficial way of like not only managing your time, but also managing your studying. And another comment says, keeping a strict schedule, especially when balancing work and school. Yes. Um, once again, that goes back to the balance that we mentioned, like all of the factors that I kind of talk about or all of the five steps I talk about in relation to beating uh transfer shock go back to successful strategies in some sense we have any others i know you all are doing so well so i know you have so many successful strategies if not then we'll move on so wait it's only there's one more oh, there's another uh, one okay sorry <laughs> it's okay managing time and concentrating on what's important yes um, another thing, and I probably talk about this in the office all the time, everything cannot be number one priority. Prioritization does not allow you to make everything number one. Like something needs to be number two. Something's got to be number three, and that's okay. Um, so, you know, know that what you need to work on at a certain point is important if you're setting aside that time for it. So, um, I've covered a lot of material in a short amount of time. So if any of this is confusing or you need more clarification, feel free to ask me questions right now. This is your question and answer time. So go ahead and you can take yourself off a of mute and go ahead and ask it or you can write it in the chat as well. Don't be shy. I promise I will not bite if you ask me any questions. Oh, wait, nobody's asking me any questions. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Give it some time. There may be questions coming. I should do like the little Jeopardy song. Like, do, 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 do. I <laughs> promise I won't do the whole song. Any questions or concerns about transfer shock? Well, if you don't, oh, okay, I see a question coming in. How early should I prepare to transfer? I'm about to finish my freshman year and plan on transferring junior year. Um, PATH counselors, do you want to answer that? I mean, I can answer it too, but do you want to answer it? Sure, I'll jump in. Um, that's, a, that's a really good question. I think next year you're going to want to start to look at deadlines because to transfer you are going to have to fill out an application and there are deadlines so as path counselors um, we try to email you all that information so stay on top of deadlines you can always reach out to us um, we also want to make sure that you're completing the correct classes so you can transfer right into your major so i think just you know staying in touch with your path counselor um, and if you do have questions or concerns, let us know so we can either answer them for you or connect you with people like Antonia um, who are at USF to help you. So I think just thinking about it, I mean, basically coming here tonight is your first step. That's awesome. And just expressing any concerns or anything that you have with us and reading your emails that we send. And we'll make sure that you've got everything done on time. Um, I would like to add specifically about the emails. Check your email. Successful students check their email every single day. Um, and the reason why I say that is it gets you into the habit of checking your email every single day when you become a professional. Because 
more than 70% of the students I work with don't check their email. Um, and I know they don't check their email because they don't respond to the emails I send saying, hey, what's going on? How can I help you? And then I end up having to call them, which is fine. I love calling people. But not only am I sending vital information, but other people at the institution are sending vital information. So make sure you are checking your email every single day. Um, I've told students before, like, if you aren't in the habit of checking your email now as a college student, how are you going to get into the habit of checking it every day as a professional? And honestly, as a professional, the expectation is you're checking your email multiple times a day. I'm not saying check it three times a day. I'm just saying check it at least once a day um, because you might be missing out on some important deadlines, scholarships, information that is going to only help you. So check your email. Um, that's my little diatribe about checking email. It's like my number one thing that I just want people to check their email all the time. Um, are there any other questions? If not, who wants to play a Kahoot? This is a rhetorical question. We're playing this Kahoot regardless of if you want to play it or not. So, oh, okay, I see some enthusiasm, Daniela, so yay. So hopefully this will work out correctly. If it doesn't, bear with me. Oh my goodness, I have like 5,000 things. Okay, how do I go to the play function? Can y'all still see my screen? Yes, we can see the, um, okay. the presentation. Okay. Let's see, maybe I need to share again. Hold on. Teams is one of those things where I'm always constantly learning. All right, can you see it, my screen now? Yes, right. we can. And I'm also gonna stop recording now. <laughs> oh, okay. Wait, I might have had work for the recording people. I'm kidding, I don't. Um, 